Hello, and welcome to this episode of Fun with Flags. I mean, Stay Machine Corner. I'm Dr. Bruce Bell Douglas, Senior Principal Systems Engineer at the MITRE Corporation and Principal at Apriori Systems. Today, I want to talk about do activities. Mostly, the behavior of state machines is detailed in what are called actions. Actions are run to completion behaviors, which means that while a state machine is executing an action, any incoming event must be deferred until the action completes. This is true for entry actions, for exit actions, and for internal transitions as well. Do activities are special in that they are interruptible. What this means is that an activity that defines the behavior has a set of actions. Between those actions, if there is a waiting event that has been received, it will stop that behavior, that do activity behavior, and that event will be processed. Let's see what that looks like. Let's see how we might use a do activity in Cameo. Here's Cameo's open. We'll add, um, we've already added a package for it. I'm going to add a diagram of BDD in this case. And I'm going to add a new block to this diagram. Let me change the size of this a little bit. Now let's add our block. A block we will call new activity demo. In this block, I'm going to want to have a uh, value property. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. X, let's type integer. And now let's add some state behavior to this. We're going to invoke the do activity on a state. So add a new diagram to my block. State diagram. Let me change the size here. So we'll name this state zero. We'll transition off to another state, state one, when it receives an EV1 event. So far, so good. Let us add a new action here. An opaque behavior that sets the value of x to zero, the starting condition. Now, in the block that we have before, I want to add a new behavior. So I'm going to add a new diagram. This one's going to be an activity diagram. It's going to be invoked for the do activity. So I'm going to have Select the uh, SysML activity diagram. Here's my diagram. Let me resize that just a bit. And we can add some opaque actions to it. Start off with uh, an opaque action uh, that sets x equal to x plus 1. Uh, add another opaque action where we print x. Now, it should be mentioned that the language used for this is groovy. If we look at the body and language of the opaque behavior, we see that the language is in fact groovy. That's because groovy has a print statement. The default language in Cameo is English, which doesn't have a print statement. So I'm going to use groovy for this. I've already defined my default standard language to be groovy for this model. Now I want to add a timeout. We're going to wait a little bit of time. So I'm going to select timeout. Here's my time events over here. Um, and I want this to be relative time. The reason is that I want it to start timing once print is done. So let me uh, do a, a quick zoom to fit. Oops, select this. Do zoom to fit here. And to make this a relative timeout, 
we have to select the is relative property. So here we see the um, uh, trigger. It's the timeout trigger is relative. We set to true. And that changes from at to after. And we'll give it a timeout. In this case, we'll give it two seconds. Two followed by S for seconds. Now, since I want to do this a bunch of times, I need to add a merge node. So there's only one token that initiates. And now I can wire them all up together with my control flows. And back up to the merge, right? So now we've got our activity behavior defined for our simple activity diagram. Augments X, prints it, waits a little while, does it again. We want to add this behavior to our state machine. So the classifier behavior, and we can see the classifier behavior for the block. Whoops. Let's go to the specification dialog. And look at classifier behavior. It's available under expert mode. The classifier behavior is the do activity demo, that's the state machine, which is what we want. But now I want to add that activity to the state as a do activity. So here's my activity, it's called do activity demo. I'm going to add ECT on the end of that, so we're sure it's the activity diagram we're talking about. Uh, Cameo names the same elements in a context, the same name, which I find disingenuous. So I'm going to take this activity, I'm going to drop it here. And now it gives me an option. Do I want to have that activity on entry, exit, or do activity? I want it to be a do activity. So now we can actually execute this and see what happens. So if I go back to my block definition diagram, I can augment this diagram with the other diagrams and actually execute and watch it execute on the diagram. So to do this, I have to drag the diagrams, not the X, not the state machine itself, not the activity itself, but the diagrams. So I'm going to select the diagram, drag it on, and I can click on the eyeball here to show that diagram. So there's my state machine. Similarly, here's my activity here and my activity diagram. I'll do the same thing. And now I can see that activity diagram. So what I expect to happen is when I run this do activity demo block, it will start up its state machine and do the entry action of setting x to zero, and then it'll start doing this activity once it's in the state. It'll start doing this. But I can in, uh, interrupt that state by receiving a, an EV1 event. So Activity diagrams doing a do activity are inherently interruptible. That means the activity going on in a do activity can be interrupted when the state that owns that do activity receives an event of interest. Now, the actions, the, the actions themselves are not interruptible. I can't interrupt in the middle of one of these actions, but I can interrupt it between these actions. And that's the behavior I want when I'm doing a do activity. Let's watch it execute. So I clear my console where the print statements are going to go. And now I can run this. So select the block, simulate, run. I'm ready to go. And now I say run. And let's watch it execute. So it's in state zero. We see that it did um, the uh, value of x to zero. And now we see x being augmented, one, two, three, and so on. And now I can add in that event, EV1. And we see we then terminate off on state 1. That's exactly the behavior we expect to see. Now, an interesting question is, how do we do this in Rhapsody? Let's do the very same thing in Rhapsody. So I've got my Rhapsody model up here. I'm going to add a block, which I will call uh, do activity demo as we did in the cameo model. We'll 
we'll add our value property just as we did before. Uh, go to the features dialog, go to value properties, add my, my value property X. Default type is int because this is a C++ action language model. So that'll work fine. And now we see, in fact, there's X. Life is good. Now, when actually when I'm going to run this in a minute, um, I need to have an instance that runs. This defines the block, not necessarily an, an instance. There are a variety of ways in which I can do that. One way is in the default component. I can go to instances, initialization, and I say, create me one of those. And that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Another way, that's something I actually commonly do. If I drag the block with the control key down, I make a copy. This is the same block. It's not a different block, it's just a different view of the very same block. But now I can say make an object. So there's make an object. I just got to find it. There's make an object right there. And now I've got an object of that type. If you look in the browser, we see in fact, not only is there a block, there's also an object, which in system L is called a part. So now when it runs, there's a part ready to define, so it'll just run. Again, many ways to do that. This is just one. So let's now add our state machine. So we'll right click, add state chart, because Rhapsody calls them state charts uh, for reasons that predate UML, actually. Um, here's our state machine. We'll create a state zero here. Uh, as before, we want to um, add our action here to make uh, x of has the value 0. So let's go ahead and add that as an action. So here's my action on entry, x equals 0. x is good. Uh, we also want to be able to transition off to another state, which I will call state 1, using the default. We can add that transition. Uh, triggered by event EV1. And we see it added an event over here, EV1, life is good. So now I want to, oh, I also have to uh, identify the default starting state. All right. Uh, so now I want to add my do activity. So here's the feature dialog. Here we see action on entry, action on exit, internal transitions. Hmm. There's no do activities. Well, that's because Rhapsody doesn't support do activities. Um, so it doesn't meet the UML or SysML specs in that case. What to do? There's a way we can do the exactly the same behavior as do activity. Have this interruptible behavior that can be interrupted by the EV1. We're going to do that with nested states. So let's go ahead and add some nested states into our state zero. So I made state zero a little bit bigger. And I'm going to add a state here I'm going to call inner one. Now this is going to have the x equals x plus one action on entry. Right? And then we want to do the next action, which was to print out the value of x. So we'll add another state and have that. And we'll call the state inner2. Let's add that action. Now, there is no print statement in C++, but there is standard output. So let's go ahead and use the standard output, the out x. And the end of line applicator. Oops. All right. Now we do have to indicate where do we start. So again, we'll add our initial pseudo state. Now, so when this runs, uh, the object will enter state zero, and then it'll enter in state inner one. I have plans for a subsequent. Um, presentation episode uh, that deals with nested states in general. But just understand 
when you're in state zero, when the object is in state zero, it's going to go to its first initial state, which is in this case, inner one. And it'll execute x equals x plus one. But now we have to transition to the next state to print out the value of x. So we're going to do that with what's called an, an anonymous or null trigger transition. So here I've got a transition that has no event trigger. So when does it fire? It fires as soon as the object enters the interstate one state. That is, as soon as the entry action for that state completes. As soon as x equals x plus one completes, this transition here will fire. And then it'll print out the value of x. Then we want to wait a couple of seconds and go back to interstate one. So let's add that transition here. Now Rhapsody uses the keyword TM for timeout, as opposed to after, which is used in Cameo. So timeout. Now we want two seconds. The units of time for the timeout um, event in Rhapsody is milliseconds. Whereas in Cameo, you can specify uh, different units. You can say seconds or milliseconds or hours or minutes. In this case, Rhapsody only has milliseconds. So it's going to be 2,000, right? So now we've built up the state machine which has exactly the same behavior as a do activity using nested states. So it's not a do activity, but it's nested state behaviors. So as this transitions between these two states, the object can receive the event EV1 and then transition off to state 1. Exactly the same behavior we had in Cameo. Let's make this work. So we will do our GMR, which will run the model compiler, which will then run the source code compiler, then run the source code linker, and then run the application. And we see it linking down at the bottom. So it'll run, but it's running my, uh, my virus checkers. It's identified there's a new application running. It's going to run a scan on it to make sure it's okay. And that should disappear in just a second. There we go. Again, we see my control panel. Uh, so I can actually start running. Now look at the block here. Do activity demo. We see there's an instance running here called do activity demo zero. Right? So if I run this, that's what's going to execute. I can visualize the execution by um, opening the instance state chart. And we see it running. If you look over on the execution window here, we see it is in fact printing out the values, which is what I expect. Now I can enter in that event EV1 to make sure it goes off to state one. Let's do that. So I go to my event generator tool and the, there's only one block, so that's already selected. There's only, only one event, so that's also selected. And I can do a generate. And in fact, that's exactly what we see. So what we see is that while Rhapsody doesn't support the do activity, I can do exactly the same behavior by using nested states. Do activity, again, is a behavior that's performed when an object is in a state. It is inherently interruptible, but only between the actions. By an incoming event that affects the state that defines that do activity behavior. I hope you found this very short introduction to do activities and the two tools, Cameo and Rhapsody, interesting. Um, if you liked it, please click the like, like button. If you have comments of things you'd like to see in further episodes of this um, recurring uh, series, please leave a comment. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe and be notified, click on the subscribe button. And you can be notified when there are uh, new uh, videos that I post in this channel. With that, I hope this is interesting. Have a nice day.